What's going on everybody? I'm Jory Goodman at The Time Teller. So today is going to be a bit of a controversial topic. And let's face it, controversial episodes aren't all that uncommon on this channel. So, you know, it shouldn't surprise any of you. But I want to make it clear right up front, okay? Because I know people are going to get so upset with what I have to say. I'm not saying you should steer clear from Panerai altogether. If you want to see my State of the Collection Diver series, you can see a Panerai I personally own. I have a Pam00111 that I love. Click up here and watch that episode. But I am saying that Panerai has recently fallen from grace and uh, you should probably absolutely steer clear from any pre-owned Panerai. Okay, we're going to get into all of this today. It's a lot to take in, but it's something I've been getting a ton of questions about. People were mind blown that I own a Panerai and I haven't made an episode with it in like two years. Well guys, we're going to go over exactly how I feel about Panerai right now in today's episode. So click that like button, hit that bell icon, hit the subscribe button if you haven't already and let's get into it. It's 12.35 p.m., let's get down to business. Okie dokie, so Panerai. Fallen from grace a little bit recently, and when I say recently, I'm saying like the better part of the last decade. One of their biggest issues is that they have a ton of fakes, and I know a lot of you guys are like, well, so what? You love Rolex. Rolex has like the biggest counterfeit market ever. That's true, but Rolex is actually doing something about it. You see, Panerai, when they were like inundated with this counterfeit market, they moved the wrong direction. They made it easier for the counterfeiters to make fakes of their watches. It was, it's just crazy. Allow me to explain. My Pam00111 is an F serial, and they made that from around 2002 to 2005. And the number one complaint I get about that watch is the watch's movement. People are like, uh, you didn't get the in-house movement, you got the OPX ETA-based movement. <laughs> Peasant. Well, that may be true. The movement in my personal Panerai is an ETA-based OPX movement. It's a 17 jewel hand wind based off of the ETA 6497. But the one thing you can't deny is looking at that movement, it is gorgeous. You can see all the decoration, the beautiful Panerai engraving all over that gorgeous OPX non-in-house movement. And again, let's keep in mind, that watch was from around the 2002 to 2005 years. Panerai didn't have a huge counterfeit problem back then. But if there's one thing Panerai is very good at, it's making the wrong decisions. Okay, so Panerai decided that all those decorated movements uh, wasn't for them. They wanted to still have display case backs, maybe solid case backs, but they weren't really going to decorate the movements at all. And you know who was really, really excited about that? Not the buyers, okay? Not the Panerai collectors, not the people that wanted a gorgeously engraved Panerai movement. Uh, no, the counterfeiters. The counterfeiters had a field day. Because again, when you make one of these watches with fairly basic movements, movements that are easy to find and they're not very heavily decorated at all, Boom, slap these parts together. You don't really have to do anything to make it look like a specific Panerai watch, right? No hardcore engravings, no intricate decorations. You just throw a Panerai dial, uh, mimic a case, and you got a fake Panerai. Of course, I am oversimplifying it, but you know what I mean. But here's where things get really, really bad, okay? These counterfeiters got so good at mimicking these kind of basic Panerai movements, again, no engravings, no decorations, no nothing, uh, that even Panerai dealers wouldn't buy a pre-owned Panerai without boxes and papers and some of them wouldn't buy them back at all. And guys, this isn't just coming from me, okay? You can go online, a lot of Panerai collectors, a lot of people in the industry, uh, they were kind of freaking out for a bit because they're like, listen, a lot of dealers, uh, they won't buy back a second-hand Panerai um, even with boxes or papers because the counterfeits have gotten so dang good they don't want to get burned. So in summation of my first point, uh, Panerai probably shouldn't have rested on their laurels. They probably shouldn't have gotten lazy. They probably shouldn't have tried to cut corners and stop decorating their movements because that led to an influx of counterfeit activity. And again, that really hurt their resale value because uh, a collector, someone that purchased a Panerai wouldn't be able to flip it because no one is going to want to buy a secondhand Panerai. But okay, counterfeits, a huge problem. We can all agree with that, especially from when Panerai I stopped decorating their movements. Uh, you know, people don't want to buy back secondhand Panerai. Dealers don't want to buy back secondhand Panerai. Um, 
it's just really scary. But I want to move on because there's some other issues that I have with Panerai currently. All right, when we look at watch collecting as a whole, there's a few watch manufacturers that kind of make a mockery of limited editions. Uh, Omega does this, Seiko has been guilty of it lately, and uh, Panerai. Panerai's doing it since uh, 1997. That's right, Panerai's first like true limited edition came out around 1997 and they have not stopped since. Panerai makes far too many limited editions. It seems like everything they release is limited and uh, it just, if everything's special, then nothing special, you know what I mean? Especially when some of their limited editions, some of their special editions aren't even special at all. Panerai has gotten lazy, okay? They spent a lot of time making these really cool watches to the point that they have some brand equity, they have some clout, if you will, and then they rested on their laurels. Uh, exhibit A, the PAM 318 Brooklyn Bridge Scandal. That's right, this Brooklyn Bridge Special Edition was said to have a decorated movement uh, with a nice engraving on the case back, so it wasn't a display case back and that's how a lot of people got screwed. You see, the case back looked amazing, right? It had the Brooklyn Bridge on it. It was a special edition. This was an expensive watch. It's a Panerai, guys, but not just any Panerai. It's a special edition Panerai. But when you take that case back off, as some people did, I don't know why, they didn't just see a non-decorated movement. They saw mangled movements, movements that did not have any finishing whatsoever. And these weren't even counterfeits. These were full-fledged, real, special edition Panerai's that just had disgusting movements. You could see tool marks, you could see scratches, uh, just not something you'd expect from a high-end company's special limited edition. So again, Panerai, resting on their laurels, getting lazy, cutting corners, what the heck? Which brings us to my final point, okay, and this one makes my blood boil. So here we go. Panerai has a counterfeit problem, fine. Uh, Panerai makes a mockery of special editions, fine. Uh, Panerai special editions aren't all that special, right? The Brooklyn Bridge scandal, uh, fine. But when you start making a mockery of your own history, uh, this is proof that you've fallen from grace and that you don't really care what you put out. This is proof that Panerai is truly, truly lazy. So Panerai is well known for being a uniquely designed Italian dive watch, right? It doesn't follow the same archetype as the Submariner. Uh, it has his own look that's truly just uniquely Panerai. But when Panerai released the albeit beautiful Pam 676 and Pam 677, uh, they looked like the beautiful Italian divers that we expect from Panerai. What's my beef with these beautiful Pam 676 and 677s? Well, um, they're not dive watches. Okay, don't get it twisted, guys. They're not dive watches. They're dive style watches. Where have we seen this before? That's right. Seiko actually just recently did it with the 5KX. It looks like Seiko is actually taking a page out of Panerai's book. The only difference is that Panerai costs like a million times more than these Seiko 5s. You see, these Panerais, they have that very Panerai crown guard. Uh, they have the whole... Italian diver look. They have a beautiful display case back, but a 30 meter water resistance rating. <laughs> Why even have that crown guard? That crown guard, that Panerai design is uniquely there so that the crown does not open up underwater. But this, you know, you can barely splash it. And guys, my arguments are congruent across the board. I just brought up the Seiko 5KX. Why did I hate it? Well, because Seiko said it's not a dive watch. It's a, it's a dive style watch. So don't compare it to the SKX because it's technically for a different purpose. Okay. <sighs> It's so frustrating. The 5KX should have a threaded crown. It has a timing bezel, looks exactly like the Seiko SKX. Why not just give it the threaded crown and the isolated case? No, 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 no. It's not a dive watch, guys, even though it looks exactly like a diver. It's a dive style watch. Well, okay, the Seiko 5KX, what is that, a sub $500 watch? This, this Panerai 676 and 677, uh, these go in the 20,000s. The movements are gorgeous. Some of them have these micro rotors. Um, it, it's amazing. Some of them solid gold, some of them stainless steel. Uh, they clearly put a lot of attention to detail in these watches, but they're making a mockery of what they put out. No, 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 no. We don't want you to wear these in the water. We're gonna give it the crown guard, the locking system, so that, you know, uh, it won't 
open up underwater, but we're only gonna give it a 30 meter water resistance rating, so we don't actually want you to get it wet at all. At least the 5KX has a 100 meter water resistance rating. That Seiko, that stupid garbage Seiko, has a better chance at getting wet than this, you know, $20,000 Panerai that's not actually a Panerai. And to give you all the reference numbers that I'm talking about here, I'm talking about the PAM 676, the PAM 677, uh, let's see, they have the PAM 674, the PAM 675, and all of these watches look gorgeous, but again, with a 300 meter water resistance rating and like an over $20,000 price tag, you shouldn't be making replicas of your own watches at that price point. It's just, it's disgusting to me. So I know a lot of people are gonna be kind of confused, like, oh, if you hate Panerai so much, why do you own one? Well, no, I like Panerai. And the fact that they're doing all these stupid things and making these stupid decisions and being lazy, that's what makes me that much more angry, okay? If I didn't care about Panerai, then them doing all these dumb things and being lazy wouldn't bother me at all. But the fact that I really like that company, their history with Rolex, okay, Rolex making the original movements for the old Panerai, such a cool, interesting watch with such cool, interesting uh, provenance and history. But now they're doing all these weird things. Everything's a limited edition and okay, they came out with this, what is it, a ceramic case with some extra loom on places and people are like, what do you think about that? I think it's ugly and stupid. It's a gimmick. <sighs> Maybe one day Panerai will go back to, you know, making really cool watches, but not right now. So guys, let me know what you think. Please comment in the comment section telling me to shave my beards and get a haircut, even though, you know, all the barbershops are closed. And what do you think about Panerai as a whole? I'd love to hear from you in the comment section below. Please check out the two limited edition t-shirt designs at the Time Teller shop. 100% of net proceeds from those two limited edition designs are going to nokidhungry.org. We're only gonna be running these shirts until the end of May. So guys, please pick up these shirts. Link in the description below. Again, all net proceeds going to No Kid Hungry. And please, please, please like, comment, subscribe, share this with everyone you know, especially the Panerai lover that you know, so you can really get their blood boiling. And uh, yeah, have some fun, stay happy, stay healthy, stay blessed. I'm Jory Goodman, the time teller. Always remember, I didn't invent time, I just tell it. Yeah, yeah.